And now South Africa's government bonds weakened sharply as yields soared today. This coming after U.S. Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke signaled he would start winding down his bond buying program. Here to discuss the sell-off and uh, the impact on South Africa's bond market is Mamukete Lijani, fixed income analyst at APSA Capital. Mamukete, thanks for your time. We're calling it a sell-off because we've seen yields soaring. Of course, bond prices are improving. There was a view in the market that perhaps this bond market was nearing frothy levels. Is this a healthy sell-off? I think uh, from, from about six, 650, those kind of levels, it really looked stretched at those levels. So um, the sell-off to about seven, 750, maybe up to eight, to my mind, it felt like he it, a healthy sort of sell-off. Um, I think beyond that point, you've got to really be looking at where U.S. Treasury levels are um, and maybe look at um, where your risk premium are, and that's where the sell-off is going to come from. But I think part of the correction was really warranted, and it was um, a little bit overdue. But now we are in that territory right yeah. now where we're the under 8% on the R186, yeah. um, you know, 830. 840 is what we're looking at right now so how do you deal with South African bonds uh, given of course you know we are certainly moving in line with emerging market debt we're moving in line with uh, countries that are linked to commodities in general as well uh, so how do you deal with uh, bonds at these levels I think what we need to keep in mind is that at some point um, markets will be priced for all the news flow so you've got to start thinking about what's the next point so where is the news flow going to go beyond this point so now um, We've got um, Fed tapering. Everybody's sort of looking at September and maybe um, an, an end somewhere in the middle of next year. Um, I think the Barclays view is that they'll probably stop in the first at the end of the first quarter, so into the second quarter. There'll be no more uh, purchases. So you would have to see data getting much worse or the, the news flow getting much more negative for bonds beyond where we are currently to think that the sell-off can continue. If you look back in history, uh, bond sell-offs tend to happen over about two to three weeks maximum um, it normally happens very violently but also very very quickly so just because you've seen a sell-off of 100 or 150 basis points that doesn't mean you need to price in another yeah. 100 or 150 basis points yeah. from now here the point that Chris Mayer was making earlier was that uh, if you still look at your yield levels I mean you're talking uh, maybe we're talking 2.38 percent in the US now and perhaps when Ben begins bumping them up you may be talking about three to four percent compare eight percent or seven percent here still Surely that risk premium is still here, and that money, some of that money should be staying home. It's not all the money that's going to go back, is it? And you're not, you actually haven't seen the money flow out necessarily, but yeah. I think what has happened is that market has repriced. So it's not like um, investors are selling um, domestic bonds in volume. Yeah. We've seen much bigger sell offs in our bond market. Um, in 2011, for instance, in September, we saw much bigger sell offs before that. Um, at the moment, it doesn't really feel like investors are leaving South Africa. It feels okay. more like investors are saying, this price has got to change and so mm -hmm. they've changed the pricing now the pricing has adjusted you've got to then ask yourself are we at the point where we feeling slightly more comfortable with levels relative yeah. to where we were previously um, are US Treasury is going to continue to sell off will the Fed be willing to tolerate um, US 10-year yields at 3% yeah. um, at these levels and especially because they know that the, the recovery has not really been bedded down but I think some level that just let's dwell on that <coughs> point just you know because once uh, you know levels do start reaching that perhaps there's the argument that it could start uh, holding back the economic exactly. growth. Exactly. So, in the so US. They, they will be very, very um, careful to nuance it, to nuance the exit. So you don't want to precipitate um, exactly what they've been trying to avoid for the past yeah. um, five years yeah. by moving too quickly and having the markets riot on you. As it is, I think um, the one the one thing that they've been looking at is how far mortgage prices or mo mortgage rates have increased in the U.S. Yeah. And you look at it and you say, well, mortgage mortgage prices have increased or mortgage rates have increased uh the, the price of servicing debt is, is up by about um, 20 odd percent now. Uh, so at these levels, do you want to push it any further? And, and I'd argue that you probably, you're probably not sitting with a U.S. recovery that's that strong mm -hmm. that the Fed would be willing to um, allow markets to riot um, and destroy what they've worked so, so very hard yeah. to, con to, to consolidate. In I'm sense. an optimist, so I try always to find a silver lining of some so kind. This is a nice yeah. break on parlance where Lindsay Williams is always so hard the ever and bear. negative and you know <laughs> that I, I I want to, to, to go the contrarian view, if you like. Now, if we woke up one day and found the South African government has fixed South Africa's labor issues and 
all these other issues that have been priced in the bond market. If you took that out, how much do you think our bond market is likely to come back? Um, if I look at if I look at our repricing or you look at pricing relative to other EM on the yeah. ten year, yeah. um, into from October, I think we we, we priced up on yields by about twenty percent. So our yields were about twenty percent higher than where they would have been yeah. relative to the rest of EM on the basis of that news. And the repricing has stayed the same, which tells me that, for instance, what we've seen in the past. Um, in the past month yeah. has been mostly, mostly um, non-domestic issues. I hope Mr. Minister Godan is listening and seeing how much <laughs> he just needs to take it out and <laughs> so let everything yeah, if, if to be cheaper for him. Exactly. If you take it out a little bit, it's going to make pricing um, slightly cheaper. Right. So maybe it takes off um, another 20 basis, 20 to 50 basis points of where your 10-year point is. So they ha but that, that's already been done. It happened between October and December last year. Mm -hmm. And you can see that in pricing. What we've seen now, well, South Africa does tend to be a little bit more high beta. So into the sell-offs, we sell off slightly higher, more aggressively than everyone else, um, and we come back a little bit more than everybody else. Uh, so in, in essence, what I'm trying to say is there is an element of that that's already in the price. Um, so if we fixed things, things will, pricing would adjust, but we would not definitely not go back to where we were um, a month ago.